You know what time it is, right? It's time for On Time and Hop with your host, John Zadar. And this is Wednesday, January 4th. Now, while I've got you here as a trapped audience and while that news is scrolling by over there, let me catch you up with some information that, well, lots of people have been asking me about. And this is just the best place to put it out. First, let's talk about HNRC, Houston Natural Resource. Getting a ton of questions about this on every single platform. And to be honest, I'm tired of typing out the same answer over and over. First off, we are not going to get any updates, most likely, from the SEC or FINRA or even the company because everything has already been filed. Now, personally, I've talked to FINRA. FINRA says everything is in place. Everything looks good. They see the deal going through for the dividend and WDHI. They said it looks like they're waiting for the transfer agent. Didn't sound real solid about that, but that's what they said. And it could come down to something just that simple. One person and FINRA or the SEC or the transfer agent hasn't completed their job. Once they get done with it, boom, we're going to have our dividends. Now, I've heard some people say it's going to take one to nine days. Some have been saying three to six months. Boy, let people's imaginations go wild, and they do. But honestly, I think we are just waiting. I think of it as a cake in the oven. We saw it go into the oven. You can look in the window, see the cake is still in the oven. All you can do is wait for it to bake. Once it's done, it'll come out and we'll get our fair share. But up till then, I don't think we're going to get any more information. I think we just need to stay calm. I like this company. They've got a lot of assets. They're here in the United States, which makes it very easy to follow them. The companies that have screwed me out of my dividends before were just little peon companies that had nothing going on for them. All talk, right? So I trust HNRC. I'm just going to be patient. I would suggest you do the same. The other stock I want to tell you about is one we talked about yesterday, CMRF. This was the one that has the potential of 250,000% gains. Well, I couldn't find why the stock was off the market, so I called FINRA today. Yes, I did. That's part of due diligence, folks, reaching out to these organizations that are there for us. You might as well talk to them. Well, when I asked them about this company, he basically Finally, when we got to the bottom of it, says, you can't buy the stock. I went, what do you mean? He says, well, it's on the market. It is available to buy, but you don't qualify to buy it. I said, what do you mean I don't qualify? It's on the pink tier of the OTC. What stocks do you have to qualify to buy? He says, this is not a stock. It's a special security. Well, when I tried to buy it, it said, could not resolve this instrument. And that's what I told him. And he says, exactly. It's not a stock. It's an instrument. It's a special security. And if you want to buy it, you have to have $1.5 million in your portfolio. Your account has to be worth at least $1.5 million if you want to purchase CMRF. And I asked him why. And he says, it's, it's a long, complicated thing. But he says, it's a special type of right and you have to qualify to buy it. So it is on the market. Yes, it is. He says it's just very thinly traded. The last day it was traded was December 5th. And the price is down at that price right now. But you and I can't get it. Unless, of course, you've got a million point five in your account. Then you can buy CMRFF. Now, you do realize we are over here at the OTC markets because most of the stocks we look at are on the OTC market. All that news was from the OTC market, and there hasn't been a lot of news since New Year's. It's been real thin, so I don't have as much to give you as I normally do. But there's still a lot of research to be done, and this site is perfect for it because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. So if you do a lot of research, quit wasting your time running around the internet looking for that one current piece of information amongst all that outdated stuff. Just come here. That's all they put up is current information. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Oh God, please let it be better than that. Double finger. Come on. Oh God. Yeah, it bumped, but that's not enough. All right, our dollar volume did go up. I think we are at 1.4 billion. We're at 1.7. Getting closer to that 2 billion, which is just the starting point for some activity. But look at our share volume. 
I'm crying at 5 billion shares and we're at 4 billion shares. This scares me, folks. This scares me. Our trades, we're just hovering above our average of 250,000. We just can't seem to get any breaks here whatsoever. New year, same old story. All right, I've got some interesting stocks to share with you today. All three of these stocks have had big news. All three had big gains. But not all the news is really comforting. <laughs> not really. Let me show you what I'm talking about. First company we're going to take a look at has had the biggest news I have ever read in all the DD I've ever done. I'm not kidding, folks. The news that came out today is going to impact the entire world. And it opens up the door for this company to make some money. The problem is the news is rather disturbing. I think you're going to agree with me. So we're looking at ticker UCLE, U.S. Nuclear Corps. She finished today at $0.08, cents with just a little over 6.5% gains. Now this is on the middle tier of the OTC. We call this the QB. The B actually stands for better. Literally, better. And the reason it's better is because on the QB, you have to have your financials audited. You have to have a CP do the accounting. On pink disclosures, it's just the management throwing us a bunch of numbers. No accounting going on there. So these are actual, factual, accounted numbers that can be trusted. It makes them more transparent. They do have a verified profile here, but we don't see a verified transfer agent. And if you think a verified transfer agent isn't important, you've overlooked what a transfer agent does. It's vital, folks. We would like to see that here very, very soon. So what does this company do? Well, short and sweet and accurate. U.S. Nuclear Corporation is a holdings company specializing in the development and manufacturing of radiation, chemical, and biological detection instrumentation for health, safety, and border protection. And that's exactly what they are all about. So what was the relative volume today around that big news? What? Really? Oh. <laughs> Maybe the news scared everybody. She's normally only doing 195,000 shares a day, which is really under the radar. But today, God, less than 50% of that. Less than, well, about one third. We are at 79,000 shares for the whole day. He gets Share structure for this company. All right, I have looked this up. I always look them up now. They told us that it was 13, maybe 14 million shares. Well, what I found was 17, maybe 18 million shares. So really, it doesn't matter how you slice it. We're under 20 million, which isn't a bad float at all. Let's take a look at our financials for U.S. Nuclear. At the end of 2021, they did $2.1 million dollars. We know it's millions because you got to put those three zeros behind any of the numbers down here for it to make any sense. And on the quarterly, well, they're doing 339,582 and 617,000 over the last three quarters. So they are making money, but it isn't a whole heck of a lot of money. They're just kind of carrying along with whatever it is that they're doing. Disclosures. Anything new over here? Well, you've got their most recent 10Q. 10Q is your quarterly report, not disclosures. 10K will be your annual. You're going to get a lot of information in these. So if you really are interested in the company, don't be doing searches all around the internet. Start with the 10Q or 10K. That'll give you so much information. You don't just have numbers in there. You got lots of information. And they headline it. So put it in your search. What it is it you're looking for? You can get right down to it. So we've got nothing here to actually take a look at. So let's run on over that news. So they got some real interesting news over here, touching on to some of these headlines. Uh, back here in uh, October, fallout from tactical nuclear bomb, how U.S. nuclear's drone, RAD, and radiation food monitors can help. In November, U.S. Nuclear introduces first and only on-the-spot PFAS detector as these forever chemicals invade our bodies and threaten health. Are you familiar with these forever chemicals? Do a search, folks. Do a search on Google. This is a little scary, too. These are chemicals that men have created that have gotten into our water system and we can't get out. They've broken down into such tiny, tiny molecules and will not break down and go away. And now are actually getting into the rainwater. And the more you drink, the more it hurts. And we can't get rid of it. 
Uh, here in December, U.S. nuclear strategic partner Palmastix is now conducting breast cancer clinical trials. And also in December, big fusion news from Department of Energy triggers heavy trading in U.S. nuclear core stock. Did you hear the news a month ago? It was a successful experiment for fusion power. Fusion power is, well, it's like perpetual energy. You put in this much energy and you get out that much energy. So you put in a little, you get out more. Kind of like a self-charging electric car. You never have to ever charge it. It just keeps going and going and going. And it isn't even pink and furry. <laughs> and then we've got the news that came out today. Now, this is big news, folks. It's very impactful. I should probably warn you, it can be a bit scary. I'm not kidding. Japan to start discharge of radioactive tritium water into the sea. How U.S. nuclear's tritium monitoring products will help. Remember Japan had that uh, nuclear tragedy over there with that tsunami that came in. Well, they've been cleaning it up and now they've got all this spoiled water that they got to get rid of. As soon as this spring, 2023, Japan plans to start releasing over 1.3 million tons of radioactive water containing tritium into the Pacific Ocean. While Japan is doing everything they can to ensure that the water is discharged safely and the environment and local inhabitants are protected, due to the radioactive nature and sheer volume of water involved, many countries nearby and worldwide can be impacted and want to detect any tritium-bearing seawater or rain clouds that reach their seashores and fisheries. Due to dilution during discharge, this tritium is not detectable with ordinary measurement equipment. Fortunately, U.S. Nuclear Corps is a tritium monitoring expert that manufactures extraordinary real-time continuous tritium water monitors to measure at or below drinking water standards in just a short time, and that can be used by local agencies to test whether the drinking water, seawater, and fisheries are safe. Since the incident, this triated water has been stored in hundreds of large storage tanks, but now TEPCO has run out of room to store the water. While TEPCO has promised to discharge the water at a much lower level than the drinking water standard set by the WHO, there are still concerns about safety and damage to the local environment and population, especially from the nearby fishing industry who wants to ensure its reputation and products are safe. No kidding. U.S. nuclear has already been in discussions with various agencies in Japan and neighboring countries about installing tritium water monitoring instrumentation for both seawater and drinking water. U.S. Nuclear offers the model Trimarian H2O, which is a real-time automated continuous tritium water monitor. There are currently no other real-time continuous instruments commercially available that are capable of measuring tritium in water down to this low level. U.S. Nuclear's radiation water monitors are already used at national labs, desalination plants, water utility companies, and nuclear power plants, and will be very effective for monitoring the tritium concentration of local waters of concern as Japan begins discharging their storage tanks. Folks, this is a scary situation. They're going to be putting all that water back into the ocean, and I don't know what's going to happen there. I mean, yeah, you can check it before we drink it, but once it's out there, it's out there, isn't it? We can't pull it back in. So this is rather scary. This could be a changing point in our future. I don't even like to think about it. But if this is the only company that has a real-time continuous monitoring for tritanium, who else is going to get the business? Everybody's going to want to get it from them. And let me tell you, everybody's going to want it. Nobody's going to want to take the chance of getting poisoned. So let's go take a look at that chart. Wasn't doing too good today. Had a wee bit of jump, but boy, the volume fell hard. As I said, the news was kind of scary. We're taking a look now at UCLE on TOS, that is Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform I got from TD Ameritrade when I signed up for their free trading account. And you can too. All you got to do is keep your account open. You don't have to transfer all your stocks over here or make them your broker. Just keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like.
So we are looking at a six month, four hour chart here. Six months ago, UCLE was at a high of 35 cents and at the beginning of July, she fell all the way down to six cents. And right now we're just above that at eight cents. We've had some nice rolls coming through here as she was struggling with her 200 and then she lost the battle right here and halfway through October. She gave up the ghost and fell all the way down here. And the only reason she bounced here is because of that fusion news that came out in mid-December had nothing to do with this company. It was a successful experiment to do with fusion. I suppose it's nuclear, but it had nothing to do with this company. And she ran from about eight cents up to 17 cents, over a hundred percent gains on something that had nothing to do with her. She came down after a couple days and right now she looks like she's trying to come back up, but the, techno the technical show she is struggling right now. 20 day, one hour view. All right, I'm gonna draw some trend lines in here. I'm gonna come from this low right down here, and I'm gonna draw a line across the lows over here, about right there. And then I'm gonna do that for the top too. Oh, I didn't mean that. <laughs> We're gonna poke one here at the very top, and I'm gonna to try to go across the tops of these wicks and carry that down as close as I can. Now what I'm showing you here is that she is going through a breakout right now, folks. She was in her triangle here, stuck in there pretty strong, and then right here she has broke through, gotten on top of her 20, on top of her 50, and it looks like she's trying to break her 200-day SMA on the one-hour chart. Can't say the technicals are carrying any strength right now. As a matter of fact, it looks like they're actually starting to get weaker. I'm going to take these off here so that they don't complicate things on the next board. Let's look at our five day, five minute. All right, so she was falling from 11 cents down to that low bubble of six cents, went sideways virtually for two days until she broke the 50 uh, yesterday, late yesterday. We got a nice strong punch there, bounced off of the 50, got a pounced through our 200 day SMA on our five minute, came back down to the 50 and is bouncing and cracking on that 200. Folks, this looks like it wants to get through that 200 and start to climb. We do see the strength on our technicals is picking up, but there's a lot of flux right now. Right again, she is pulling back right there. You can see that without a doubt. But something's got to break here, right? I mean, you've got all this radioactive water, which is just about ready to be put into the ocean. They said spring of 2023. That's just around the corner. Aren't people going to want these monitoring devices in place before the water gets into the ocean? I would think so. So I'd be watching this company for some contract news, some countries buying their products, something like that. I would expect this stock to start to move. What do you think? We're now going to take a look at a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker CRKN, Crown Electrokinetics Core. They had some big news come out today about a deal that they're making with another company, and it's going to bring a lot of money into the coffers. And I'm telling you, this company needs it bad. So CRKN finished today at just about 30 cents and just over 60% gains. Now, when we talk about these NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange stocks, we have to consider the price if it's under a dollar. They've got a minimum bid price requirement on the major exchange, which says you cannot have your stock go under a dollar and stay there for too long. If you do, they'll yank you off the major exchange and throw you right down to the OTC market. Now, I've looked. I haven't seen any warning letters yet. However, I've also looked at the charts, and it looks like they're over five months that they've been under a buck. So they're right on the threshold right now. So what does this company do? Well, they make a film that is electronically controlled. It goes between glass or on the glass and you can control tint. It tints down the opacity of how much light comes through the glass. They like to work with these high rise buildings and you know how some of these buildings are. The light comes in at a certain time of the day and bam, you are just blinded. So they've got this technology where they can just control it electronically through their film. So what was the relative volume today around their big news? Now that's more like it. Yeah, she went from about 6 million shares a day up to 75 million shares. You're looking at over 11 times her normal volume. That's what I'm talking about. Share structure. 
come on, share structure. All right, of course, I looked it up. I'm looking them all up now. We got a great outstanding share count of 20 million, so you know it's less than that. Comes out to about 14, 15 million, right around there. Another stock with a decent float. Financials for CRKN. Well, the end of their fiscal year is in March. March of 2021, they had nothing. No money whatsoever. And quarterly, <laughs> no money whatsoever. So as I said, not only is the news that came out today important, it's vital. Disclosures. We got any new filings that have come out here recently? We do. We've got an 8K that came out today. An 8K is a material change. This will tell you about acquisitions, mergers, uh, splits. It'll tell you a lot of important information. And I know what this one is about. It's about the deal. So we're just going to go to the news and take a look at that. So this is the news that came out today. Crown Electrokinetics acquires a Mary Gen 7. The acquisition adds immediate revenue and $67 million purchase order. Boom! Cha-ching! They're in the money just like that. Crown Electrokinetics Core, a leading smart glass technology company, today announced it has entered into an asset purchase agreement with Amerigen 7, an emerging leader in the fields of distributed antenna systems and construction of fiber optic infrastructures. The CEO states, we are pleased to announce the acquisition of Amerigen 7, which will now be renamed Crown Fiber Optics. Crown Fiber Optics will focus on two business initiatives, the design and the installation of distributed antenna systems and building the fiber optic infrastructure for charter communications. Crown will now have two product categories with which to service our customers, our smart window insert and our distributed antenna systems. Our customers have routinely expressed an interest in solving two problems, the inefficiency of their windows and the inability of 5G signals to penetrate their buildings. Distributed antenna systems will allow for a stronger cellular signal within the buildings and other infrastructures. Crown will now offer both solutions. The asset acquisition also includes an executed purchase order with Charter Communications for $67 million to build out their fiber optic network in the state of Ohio. We expect to commence work in Ohio in the coming weeks. Additionally, the Crown Fiber Optic Division will continue to focus on its existing fiber optic construction in the state of Michigan. Crown Fiber Optics is a prime contractor for charter communications in the state of Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. We are anticipating our Crown Fiber Optic Division to generate approximately $30 million of revenue in 2023. So folks, you're taking a company that has no money right now and they're automatically going to be making money. They've got business they're going to be jumping into, what did they say, in just the next couple of weeks. They've got a purchase order of $67 million already executed. It's part of the deal. And they plan on making at least $30 million of that $67 million this year. Definitely a plus for the company. Let's go take a look at that chart. Now we're cooking with Corkin. This is ticker CRKN. This is a six month, four hour chart. Six months ago, we had a high of $1.37. Mid December, we had a low of a nickel. And right now, we are just under 30 cents. She has been falling all of this time. She's been under her 200. She did tag it once here in July. And then she had a run here December 14th. And I haven't got a clue why. I did go look. I couldn't find any filings or news presses on the 14th or even the days before. Maybe there was a tweet. I don't know. But in either case, she did not hang above that 200 for very long. Came back down, settled on her 50-day SMA all the way until today when she rocketed through that 200 SMA. Went all the way up here and then had a mighty fall coming back down and has landed securely on her 9-day SMA above the 200-day SMA. Looks good. Technicals were strong. Uh, they don't look desperate. They really aren't showing a whole lot of fall here. They kind of look like they're just holding right now, not going anywhere. 20-day, one-hour view. 
doesn't look a whole lot different than what we were just looking at. What you can see though is that she was falling all day and all of our technicals have rolled around and are all pushing down right now. Technicals on the one hour are quite weak. Five day, five minute. Nothing going on except for today. Let's come on in on that. So we had all of our gains pre-market, even some loss. Now this was a massive jump, folks. This jumped from about 17, 18 cents up to 94, 95 cents. You're looking at 425, 450% gains just like that pre-market. Now you and I can take advantage of this. We're allowed to trade pre-market after market with major exchange stocks like the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Sure you are. You don't need any special training. You don't need special qualifications or any permissions. All you got to do is get up early or stay late. Seriously, all you got to do is get in there and you can trade. What you've got to remember though is you've got to change the period of time on your order. It's not a day trade anymore. It's going to be day trade plus extension or good till canceled plus extension. You don't put extension in there. It's just going to ignore your order and that's going to really pee you off I guarantee it so she had that massive push up 450 percent up to 94 and a half cents opened up the market at about 57 cents which still gives you about 300 percent gains and she just kept falling all day long I would have suspected her to bounce off of that 200 day SMA here but she did not she came through it and right now it looks like she's trying to come back up now, the technicals do show a little bit of strength. Absolutely do. We can see our MACD is on top and pushing towards the signal line. RSI is real temperate right now, and it's flat. It's 48. That's not showing us anything. But what I see here is the spread right here. This is my PPO, percentage price oscillator, a lot like the MACD. I put this on the top. Underneath this red line is my ADX. ADX is trend continuation. As long as this line continues in the same direction that it's going, whatever the trend is, and we can see the trend is going up, whatever the trend is, that means it's continuing. So if this changes direction, down, up, straight, whatever, if it changes direction, my trend is changed. Well, look what we got here. This is going down and the blue line is going up, kind of like a bobby pin being spread open. Whenever you see those two spreading apart, guaranteed 100% the price is going up. So looking at the chart right now, it looks like it is trying to recover. I keep my eyes on CRKN. First off, they got money coming in now. They expect $30 million the first year. They got uh, work they're going to be jumping into in the very next few weeks. So everything looks great for this company. The only thing we got to worry about is if they can get that price up over a dollar. Now, speaking of that, let's run back and see when did they fall out from underneath the dollar? Uh, looks to be about right here. This is at the end of July, August, September, October, November, December, January. If they don't get their price up in the next couple of weeks, they could end up down here at the OTC market. Now, as bad as that sounds, we can make advantage of it. Normally, when they get these warning letters that they're going to be removed off of the OTC, you'll see a bounce. Before they get kicked off, there'll be a bounce. And when they land down on the OTC, there will be a bounce. But it hasn't happened yet. And the way this thing bounced today up to 94 cents, there could be some more excitement coming the next few days. There's a lot of money sitting on the table for this company and they need any money they can get. So I like what I see. What do you think? Last stock we're taking a look at is another penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker VVOS, Vivos Therapeutics. They had a good day. They had big news come out today. The FDA approved one of their products. So they finished the day at $1.88 with just over 154% gains. Now we're going to get more information about what this company is doing, but I just want to show you a description right now so you've got a general idea. 
Vivos Therapeutics is a medical technology company focused on developing and commercializing innovative diagnostic treatment methods for patients suffering from breathing and sleep issues arising from certain dental facial abnormalities such as mild to moderate obstructive sleep apnea, also known as OSA, as well as snoring with adults. So what was the relative volume around this company's big news today? Now that's what I'm talking about. This is what we want to see. That's almost 90 times her normal volume. She jumped from 126,000 shares to 113 million shares. That is an incredible pounce in volume. Share structure. Well, we're going to have another good low float. Outstanding shares is here at 23. I did look it up. It was 17.9 million. So all three of the stocks we've looked at today have been under 20 million shares. Financials for Vivos. Well, at the end of uh, 2021, they had done $16.8 million worth of revenue and got to keep about 12 and a half million of it. Not bad. Quarterly, uh, they're doing roughly four million every quarter, which is a little bit behind from last year, but they're holding their own right now. Disclosures, anything recent over here? Yes, we do. All right. These are Form 4s, folks. You can see these all came out at the end of December. A Form 4 is a filing that insiders, the management, must file whenever they buy or sell shares. Now, all of these, all of these except the very top one are the same one. They all got 30,000 shares. This very top one, we'll jump in and take a look at it. This is from Huntsman Ronald Kirk. He is the chief executive officer, a director, 10% owner. He got more. He didn't just get 30,000 shares. He got 150,000 shares and 333,000 shares. There's about 450,000 shares there. And then when you look back here, you've got what? One, two, three, four, five, six. All of these each got, they're all directors, they each got 30,000 shares. Now, I don't know if it was some deal, a payout, a Christmas bonus. I don't know what it was, but they all bought more shares. So you've got six times three is 18. You've got over 600,000 shares that were just purchased here in less than a month ago. That's it though. We've got nothing else going on here. So let's go take a look at that news. Most of the news they've got here is related to their financials, but there are two good pieces of news. Reading the headline of one of them here, this came out uh, December 15th, Vivos Therapeutics announces new revenue stream through strategic medical billing relationship with Nexus Dental Systems. And then we had news that came out today. We'll just jump right on into that. Vivos Therapeutics receives FDA 510K clearance of its flagship DNA oral appliance for treatment of obstructive sleep apnea. It's a device. They've gotten approval for it. But what exactly is a FDA 510K? Well, they tell us over here that a 510K is a pre-market submission made to the FDA simply to demonstrate that the device marketed is safe and effective. That's really all it is, but you need it if you want to sell your product. So that's what came out today. So they tell us here that Vivos Therapeutics, a medical technology company focused on developing innovative treatments for patients suffering from dental facial abnormalities and or mild to moderate obstructive sleep apnea and snoring in adults today announced a brand new clearance from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for its proprietary DNA appliance. Now we're not talking DNA like molecular structure of your cells. This is just an acronym. It stands for Daytime Nighttime Appliance. What it basically is folks, I'm going to show you a video here. The Vivos appliance is a simple to use mouthpiece, kind of like a retainer that gently expands the upper arches of your mouth, increasing the size of the nasal cavity, maximizing airflow volume, which reduces snoring and delivers more oxygen to the body. You simply put it in each night before bedtime and take it out in the morning. It's usually pain-free. In fact, she often forgets she's even wearing it. 
That's it right there. It basically is like a retainer that dentists use. As a matter of fact, it has been used as a retainer by dentists. Dentists have been using this product for quite a while, but now it's been recognized to actually helping with apnea. It actually helps open up the throat and allows more air to get in. And it's very simple. You don't have to wear those bulky masks like so many people wear. I've got lots of friends that wear these things to bed and they're noisy, they're uncomfortable. Imagine just putting in a retainer and actually getting to sleep. That's as simple as this is. They tell us here that with the latest FDA clearance achieved, the DNA appliance offers a new treatment in resumine. The DNA appliance has been marketed for several years for orthodontic treatment, such as expansion of the jaw and position of teeth in adults and children, and is still available to be used for these applications. For the first time, however, the FDA has formally recognized the benefits of our proprietary core technology in our DNA appliance as an effective treatment for mild to moderate OSA in adults, for people who can't sleep, people who can't breathe because they can't sleep. So there it is, folks. You've got a product that's gotten approval. It's very simple. Dentists have been using it for orthopedic stuff all this time, but now it can actually be sold and bought to help people who have apnea. Big deal. Let's go look at that chart. VVOS, six month, four hour chart for Vivos Therapeutics. Not a whole lot going on, but a downhill run. All six months, she's been under that 200 day SMA and most of the time under the 50 day SMA. And we can see she had a low bubble here about 10 days ago of 34 cents. And she has been working her way up from that point. And the last two days, she has jumped hard. Jumped from 40 cents up to almost $3. Folks, that is a 700% run from the low to the top. She did fall back and right now she's sitting at around $1.88, maybe even a little bit lower because she's been falling after market. Our technicals, God, look at our PPO. Look at the distance between the red and the blue. That is skyscraping right now. Our MACD is doing the same thing, pushing up really hard. Our RSI has pulled back. She was very strong, but she's now under the overbought at 66. And our ADX shows that the price is continuing to climb. That is to say it has enough strength to do it. 20 day, one hour chart. Not a whole lot going on here. She had that little bump, but then she just went flat for all these days. And yesterday, yesterday she started moving up and didn't stop. She just continued through the whole day, aftermarket, pre-market, and then took a surge. By the time the bell went off, she was off and running. All of our technicals, though, are pulling back on the one hour. There was a lot of fall, and it's still falling after market hours on the one hour chart. Everything looks a little weak. Five day, five minute. So there's your run yesterday. I mean, it's not huge, but it was steady. She started down here at that 40 cents, and by the end of the day was up to 83. So she did have a solid 100% gain yesterday. She continued going on her 50 day SMA here. You can see she is riding that like a road. Took a bounce here, fell back, and then shot up, folks. Shot from a dollar up to 296, and this hit at about uh, 1040 in the morning. And that was it. That was all she wanted to give for the day. She had a bouncing marathon all the way back down to the 200, which is where she's sitting right now. Volume got weaker and weaker through the day. Technicals have gotten weaker, and things do not look look like they want to continue on. And I'm not real sure if there's a lot more momentum here. I know apnea is a big problem. I know people are always looking for simpler solutions to the problem. Nobody wants to wear that mask and it really does feel horrible not to get enough sleep, folks. When you don't get enough oxygen in your body, no matter how much sleep you get, you're not getting enough rest and you feel dragged down all day. You catch colds easier. You're in a bad mood. It's just horrible. So so maybe this is really going to do something tremendous. Remember, it's just a little tiny mouthpiece, not no huge mask. I do some more investigation on VVOS, but I like what I see. Whether they're going to continue running remains to be seen. Looks like she's going to test that 200-day SMA right now.
So I've brought you three stocks that all had big news today, made nice gains, and all have low floats. I'd be keeping my eye on UCLE. With that radiated water coming out in the next few months, I think every country around Japan is going to want to get their water tested. So I'd be keeping my eye out for UCLE jumping on the news. The other company, Corkin, weren't making any money. They've now got a $67 million deal that's been executed. Say they're going to make make $30 million and they're going to work in the next few weeks. That one's probably got some excitement still to come. And the last stock, VVOS, well, apnea is a big problem. And when you got a simple solution that's very easy to wear and doesn't cause discomfort and can make your life happy, I think it could be a big seller. So yeah, I think all three of these stocks have got something to offer. But you do your own DD. I missed a lot. There's a lot more to know. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.